Shall we begin? Why would a good God allow suffering to exist? Suffering to exist. Does God really exist? Really exist. Let's begin now. Why did God command the deaths of so many people in the Bible? People in the Bible. Why does God remain so hidden? Remain so hidden. Recently, my wife introduced me to a book by Hans Christian Andersen. It's about a tale of a king who likes fine clothing, and he's very vain. He hires two tailors to make him the best outfits, and the tailors who are really scam artists make him a promise that they will use the best material, and the material is invisible. The only people that will be able to see it are those that are fit to see it. So they go and they make the clothes and they invite the king and his, and his ministers and they try on this outfit that they prepared. And all look and say, wow, it's great. Because they don't want to seem unfit. The king wearing the clothes decides to now go into the street and march. And everybody in the town looks and says, wow, the clothes, clothes are beautiful. And then out of nowhere, a kid who's too young to know what is happening shouts out, Why is the emperor not wearing any clothes? And they take the emperor, they take the little child and they hush him. I think that is what's happening today. Political correctness. Especially when it comes to the issue of transgenderism. Today I have invited Dr. Tony Costa with me to discuss this interesting and unique topic. Dr. Costa, ever since news broke about Bruce Jenner, who is now Caitlyn, it seems like it increased the discussion about gender and same-sex changes. You see Jaden Smith, who now is a female model for women's clothing. Um, you see young thug Kanye West, who are wearing skirts. What does the Bible say about gender identity? Well, the concept of gender identity actually originates with the creation account. In the biblical worldview, when God creates the, the first human pair, God uh, creates them in his image, but God also at the same time identifies them as male and female. And so gender, sexual gender, is extremely important in that it is interconnected with our identity as human beings. And so the question really has to be asked is what or who defines gender? Mm -hmm. uh, in the biblical worldview, it's very clearly that God, our creator, made us in his image, and his image is defined as male and female, as a complementary pair. Um, but if you don't believe in God, then what you're left with is yourself. Well, you determine what is gender. Mm -hmm. The government determines what is gender. The majority determines what is gender. But from a biblical point of view, God himself defines us as male and female, made in his image. So what would God be thinking when he sees this scenario of a person who is male saying that they're female? What, what's that saying about God? Well, it's not so much what it's saying about God. The, the Bible also speaks about the event of the fall, mm -hmm. where humans rebelled against God in the person of, of Adam. And in that rebellion, it, it wasn't just rebelling against God as their rightful creator and rightful sovereign Lord. But the fall also involved a falling away from our identity. And so with the fall, you also have the degradation of not just the image of God, but you also have the degradation of sexuality. Mm -hmm. God created sexuality. And so the, the idea here is that when man rebels, rebels against God, he's also rebelling against God sexually. Mm -hmm. And how does he do that? He, he rebels against God by violating the male-female complementary union. Um, by going into same-sex relationships, uh, dressing up as a woman, um, pretending to be something that you're not, which is very commonplace today. In fact, mm -hmm. very politically correct and progressive. But in terms of the Bible, these are all acts of rebellion against God, basically saying, you don't define me. 
You don't tell me who I am. Okay. I define myself. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Costa. My pleasure.